The last StarCraft 2 patch caused a lot of intense discussions. People saying that the Zerg race is once again OP and that we'll have Zergcraft in 2023. At the same time, Zerg players claim they have been nerfed really hard and pretty much every race or player is whining about something. But I think it's a much more interesting topic than just a single patch. And I dare to say StarCraft 2 will never ever be perfectly balanced, no matter how hard people try to patch and change it. Here are three reasons for that. If you take a look at many patch notes, you'll see that the changes are almost always very subtle and minor, just tweaking one number or another. Sometimes there were big changes like removing a unit or an ability, but most of the time it's all about micro changes. That's because StarCraft 2 balance is prioritized for high level players and esports. However, StarCraft 2 is not a simple game. In fact, it's one of the few strategies that has a completely asymmetrical balance. There are not so many strategies in which races would differ from each other so drastically. The playstyle for each race is unique, and it's really hard to switch races in this game. If you compare it to, let's say, Company of Heroes, you'll see that tweaking the balance in StarCraft 2 is much more complicated, because each race possesses unique tools and units to win, while in most other strategies there is a lot more in common between factions or races. This difference creates a unique gaming experience for each race you play, but it also challenges you with completely different problems that are limited to a certain race. For example, you don't need to learn a proper SimCity as a Zerg player, and you rarely build walls unlike other two races. As a Terran player, you are almost forced to play aggressively, and your playstyle revolves around putting pressure, while it could be completely different for other two races. And don't get me started about units, they require completely different approaches. But there is more to it. Due to skill sailing and learning curve, StarCraft 2 can provide you with unique experience in each league. If you open any forum discussion, you'll see hundreds of people complaining about carriers, mech terrans, AMO, Zerg players, and etc. However, it's not even an issue for professional players, and Protoss Race, which dominates every StarCraft 2 league from Bronze to Grandmaster, actually struggles to win tournaments, and sometimes struggles to even achieve high placements. While the race could be easy and efficient for newcomers, the experience is totally different at the very top level. And what's great about the last update, it's probably the first time in the history of StarCraft 2 when a patch is targeting not only Grandmaster League and Pro players, but also some lower leagues and casual players. Let's take Carriers, for example. Throughout all time they existed in StarCraft 2, they were a pain in the ass for the vast majority of players, especially the Zerg race. It's just too difficult to engage carriers with an army that is more focused on destroying the carriers themselves, such as Vikings and Corruptors, because your units used to target interceptors instead, creating a very cost-inefficient situation. New changes allow you to A move straight into the capital ships, which makes it a lot easier. However, this change, as well as many other quality of life changes, won't really impact the top level. And that's the beauty of StarCraft 2, the game feels new on every learning stage you come through. But it's also been a problem for the whole existence of StarCraft 2. Many people left the game due to it being too difficult for them, and that's only one reason. But what people often don't mention is that the game has those, uh, let's call them, unequal efforts. It's much easier to aim with a big number of banglings than to split against them. It's also much easier to play mech than to counter it due to the nature of how things work in that game. This is one of the common problems for StarCraft 2. It's incredibly hard to balance these efforts that players take to win the game. Some quality of life changes help, like with carriers. The game is precisely designed to have different experiences for each race, and sometimes it creates different efforts required. The good thing about that is, each race usually has stages where they do more or less, and it switches through the duration of a match. The last reason for why StarCraft 2 is incredibly hard to balance, the game has almost an infinite skill cap and each year we see players who impress us with things we thought were not possible. I have three examples for you. Let's start with the first one. In 2017 Zerg Race was having a really nice time with balance, but for some reason it didn't impact tournament results as much. In fact, Zerg Race won the least premier tournaments compared to the next five years, even though in terms of balance, it was probably one of the best states for this race in Legacy of the Void. Remember when Terran players would try Mass Reapers? It didn't seem to work for most players, but there was Bjorn, the guy who made it look like something completely overpowered. His victory at WCS 2016 Global Finals even made Blizzard nerf them. And we also have Serral. In 2018, Zerg Race had won most of Premier Tournaments, but it's mostly due to Serral. And if you look at the runner-ups, 
it would always be a Protoss or Terran player. So to sum up, it's very hard to find an ideal balance with race differences, required efforts and skill levels to create a perfect state of the game. But StarCraft 2 nevertheless still retains the best aspects of the RTS genre, as well as esports. It's the most competitive game with the limitless skill cap that allows the truly best player to excel, and that's why we love it. What's your take on the balance? Check out the real issues with balance patches in these two videos. Have a nice day, and see you next time.